Python Chapter 9 Types of Methods. This lecture is going to help you understand what the different types of methods are, how to recognize and identify them, and then how they're used in code, how, they in, how these methods will interact with functions. First, let's just review the public interface. When designing a class, you start by specifying its public interface. So this is going to be part of the creative process, is just designing what is needed for your class. You don't always have to know everything. Like when we started with the clicker class, we started with just a few methods, and then we added to it. And that's perfectly fine, but you need to start somewhere. So designing your class, or deciding on the public interface, is just kind of doing your plan. The public interface consists of all methods that a user of the class may want to apply to its objects. The public interface can also include parameters or arguments needed when invoking a method, and these parameters and arguments are the data needed by a method to complete a task. We've had some examples of these in the two or three classes that you've created already. So here's an example of the public interface for the clicker class. We've listed some behaviors that we want the class to do, the, an object of the class, the names of these methods, some of the instance variables that might be used, and if there's some data needed from the function. Like in order to um, give this instance a name, I would have to get that from the function and pass it in. So this is something that might be a parameter argument, and here these instance variables are private. They're only going to be used in the method and the pro anybody that's using the main programming section or the functions will not know or see these instance variables. So what are the types of methods? When you look at the public interface of a class, it is useful to classify its methods. That helps you know how you're going to define it when you are creating the methods and also how you're going to call it from the function. So there's three main types of methods. The first one is the constructor. There's also a mutator function, and there's an accessor. The constructor is going to be, there's only going to be one of them, and that's going to initialize your instance variables. Okay. A mutator is going to actually change something in the object, such as changing an instance variable. And an accessor method is going to get information from the method that the function might need. It's usually going to have some kind of a return. Let's take a look at each one more carefully. The constructor defines and initializes the instance variables of an object. It is automatically called whenever an object is created. That means the programmer doesn't call the constructor. You're not going to have any line of code in your functions that actually invoke the constructor. It happens automatically, and you can only have one constructor for any class. Here are some examples of what your constructor might look like. The name is always the same, although it's not going to be a capital letter. It's always two underscores, init, two underscores. If you're ever having a problem with your class where it's telling you some, some things aren't defined, take a look at this and just make sure that everything is correct here. This is where the error usually is going to happen is you're missing an underscore or something like that. You're always going to have the self parameter, and then you list all the instance variables with self dot in front and whatever initial value you want. Here's an example of again of an argument where the value of name is going to be passed in from an argument to the parameter as from a function. Let's talk about a mutator method. A mutator method modifies the object on which it operates. This means that it's going to be changing an instance variable. So some kind of math or work is actually going to be going on. The function invoking the method passes values to the method through an argument. So if it needs any, it will pass them in as an argument to a parameter. So the method receives the argument in its parameter. The function that invokes the method is its own line of code. It's not part of an assignment statement. And it usually, and the method itself, usually doesn't have a return statement. So here's an example of a mutator method. You can see that it's changing an instance variable. And here's another example. It's changing instance variables. And here's an example of the function of it being invoked. So this would happen in a function. 
and here's our object and it's invoking this method. See how it's just a statement by itself. There's nothing else attached to it like an equal sign or a print. And here's another example and this one has an argument that would get passed in to the parameter. Okay, so the function invoking the method passes its values through an argument. There's an example. The method receives it in its parameter. And the function that, that invokes the method, it's a line, it's a statement by itself. It's its own line of code. Both of these examples show that. Let's take a closer look at the accessor method. It queries or asks a question of the object for some information. It doesn't usually change the object, so it's only going to be getting information, not changing anything. The function invoking the method shouldn't need to share any information, but if it does, it will do it as an argument into a parameter, just like a mutator method. The function invoking the method does it as part of an assignment statement. So you can see here's the big difference between accessor and mutator is when you're invoking it. So the accessor method must be part of something. A print statement, an assignment statement, it's part of something. And the function, the method, this should say method, usually has a return statement. So here's an example of my accessor method. And it has a return statement and this one as well. Notice how it's not doing any kind of math or any kind of work. It's simply returning a value to the function. Here's an example of invoking these methods. Notice that this one is part of an assignment statement and this one's part of a print statement. It's not going to stand alone because this is returning a value and that returned value has to go somewhere. So here's an example. The function invoking the method is part of a statement. And this should say method. The method has a return. Here's another example. This is a public interface for the math tutor class that we created. It doesn't include everything, but this is the main part of the public interface that the user would actually use. There were some other methods but they got called internally. These are the only ones that were usually that were accessed from a function. So here we've got our behaviors. We've got the names of each method. We've got the instance variables that we use. That should be a period. And sometimes we could pass in some data. So when we initialized our instance variables, the name of this instance variable came in to its parameter. And we also use number argument into a parameter. Let's identify these types of methods. So given this public interface, which methods are a constructor? Well, remember, it can only have one. It's going to be this one right here, the init. It's going to get called automatically whenever you construct an object. Okay, from this public interface, which ones are mutator? So think about where changes actually happen. That would happen in addition, subtraction, and multiplication. All of these change the correct and the answer and the actual. Given this public interface, which methods are accessor? Well, you could just say by process of, of elimination, but what if this was the first question? The accessor ones are going to be returning values back to the function. So we have two of them. We even have the word return here to help us remember. And the word get here is part of the name. That's also a good reminder. So we have this one and we have this one that took their answer, didn't do any work, just returned the value back to the function. Now we've got some more questions that we can deal with looking at our public interface and knowing what we know about methods and functions. Let's answer some more questions. So given this public interface, what code would define the class? We know this is our math tutor class, so the actual class definition would look something like this. So given the same public interface, what code creates an instance of the class? We just discussed that this is the math tutor class, so I need to have a name for my object. So I might do something like player1, 
equals, and I've got my class with parentheses. If you forget these parentheses, it will not give you an error, but it will not give you a class either. So weird, funky things will happen. So it's one thing to check if things aren't going correctly. Here's our next question. Given this public interface, how would a function in a tester program invoke a mutator method? So remember, a mutator method is going to do some kind of work. It's not going to have a return statement. So when my function calls it, it's going to be its own statement, something like this. So given this public interface, how would a function in a tester program invoke an accessor method? An accessor method is going to return a value. Therefore, it has to be part of a statement. And here's two examples. It can be part of a print statement, part of a correct statement. It could also be part of a condition. There's lots of different ways, but it has to be part of something. It cannot be by itself. Here's our next question. Given this public interface in the method, so we're looking right here, how does an instance variable give its value to a local variable? Okay, so remember these are private, and if it wants to share the value back to the function, what does it have to do? It has to use a return statement. For example, return self.correct. So a method is going to give its value in a return statement. Here's our next question. Given the public interface in the function, how does a local variable receive a value from an instance? So the, the instance uh, variable is in the method. How does it go from a method to a function? It's going to get it as part of an assignment statement. So this is the return, and this is in my function, and it's going to be part of an assignment statement. That's how the function gets the value. So notice how these two go together, but the first question had to do on the methods end, which is a return. This is the functions end, which is an assignment statement. Okay, so next question. Given this public interface in the function, how does a local variable give its value? So I have a function and the method needs it. How is it going to get from the function to the method? as an argument passed to a parameter. So this number is from our function and it's going to get passed in to this method. Okay, here's our next question. In a method, how does a variable get a value from the function? So it's getting passed in, where does it go? It goes to the parameter. So here's the definition of my method. And this parameter right here would be receiving that value from the argument. So once again, just be careful with, with the question. Here we're talking about a method, and here we have a method. The other question was talking about the function, and that would be an argument. So let's just review the concepts from this lesson. There are three types of methods, constructor, mutator, and accessor. Functions give values to a method as arguments passed to parameters. Methods receive values from a function by arguments passed to parameters. So it's basically the same thing. We're talking about the function uses the argument and the method receives it into its parameter. Methods give values to a function with a return statement and the functions receive these values as part of an assignment statement. So these two are kind of going together as well. When a mutator method is invoked, it's a statement by itself. When an accessor method is invoked, it's part of a statement. A constructor method is automatically called when an object is created, and a method can only have one constructor. If you can keep all of these facts straight about methods when you're defining a class and working with classes, especially in a program with functions, will help. It will make your job a lot easier and a lot less frustrating when you're debugging everything. So just review these facts. Really think about them when you're creating your class in your next program, and it will really help you along.